should take Bikini Bottom and push it somewhere else! Hi, so I know I promised that I would have better audio. I did get a mic, I swear, um, but it didn't come with an adapter, so I'm waiting for that. In the meantime, we're going to do some shorter, not necessarily lighter videos, but different videos. Um, I also was going to start the first episode of The Range of K-Pop, which is going to be about Chaeyoung. The thing is, Chaeyoung wrote a song on Twice's upcoming mini-album, so I want to include that, so I'm going to wait for that to come out. That being said, I think we've all been in a class where our teacher just says, you know, the character is sad because the curtains are blue. Like, shit like that. And we're all just like, please get me out of here. I don't care. None of- all of this is meaningless. And I understand why you would think that. I used to think that. But I don't anymore. And I think we need to restructure the way that we look at meaning. Um... First of all, meaning can mean so many different things, but regardless, I, I, you know, we look at meaning like it's something obtainable, like food or water, when really we need to look at it like it is a bodily system. If you have, if your cardiovascular system isn't working, you no longer have a person. If your writing doesn't have meaning, did you really write anything? <laughs> I know it's a weird question, but it's... I feel like that just makes sense to me. Um, I read a book in AP Lit called How to Read Literature Like a Professor, and he talked, the author, the author talked about um, how all writing is kind of contributing to one single story, the human story. There is a literary canon and everything is giving it texture and depth. Um, and I think that, that also has existential implications. Like, we all have our individual essences, but our essences also affect the human essence. It's a lot of weird things to think about, but I think that it's a valid source of inquiry. I have some examples. Like, people not, might not realize these things have another layer of meaning than even they can understand and I think that's important to talk about. My girlfriend, for example, very good writer. We're both writers. I'm more interested in traditional publishing and I'm also, um, I do a lot of writing research because it's just like my favorite thing. Uh, she has done some writing research. You know, I've sent her videos that I think will help her. Uh, when she has a problem, but, you know, she, she doesn't know necessarily as much about, I don't know, literary devices as I do, so, and that's not a bad thing, you know, it, knowing literary devices is, like, so much fun for me, but such a stupid thing to feel is fun, I feel like, I don't know, it's a, it's a weird conundrum, but she can write, say, Ace and Detton, and I'd be like, oh, good use of Ace and Detton, and she'd be like, I have no fucking clue what you're talking about, but at the same time, it's still contributing to her writing and its overall meaning. Does that make sense? Um, I mean, the term symbolism wasn't invented until the 1880s, I'm pretty sure, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure, you know, the likes of Shakespeare were writing with symbolism way before then. They may they may not have had the word for it, but they they were doing it and it was an important part of their writing. I also wanted to talk about oddly a character from Pokemon. Pokemon does not have a good reputation for having good stories, but I think that Cyrus is actually very interesting, even though people just kind of view him as your stereotypical villain who wants to like and the world. Um, Cyrus's whole thing is that he wants to not have emotion and not live in a world with emotion, but, you know, you, you read his dialogue, he uses very bland diction in order to convey his, his sense of he doesn't have any emotions, but if you look at his sentence structure, it is so pretty and thoughtful and it really lets you know that while he's bland on the surface 
there is an internal struggle happening inside and I think that's really interesting um I also wanted to talk about lineation just because it's one of my favorite things about writing poetry specifically um I think there's something to be said for looking at poetry on a page you know spoken word poetry is great but I also think that poetry is kind of a visual art that people don't necessarily recognize um and by this I mean like how many stanzas are you using are they equal are they of equal length are are you using any stanzas like how long are your lines are they going back and forth between choppy and long or whatever there are so many things you could do and i think it's very interesting you also have po poets like joy harjo who in some of her poetry she doesn't really use lineation she just kind of writes almost like a paragraph but it's still poetry because of things like um like figurative language and density all of those good things that make poetry poetry and i also wanted to talk about something i personally utilize in my poetry which i call the weight of lineation if i have a really heavy line a really hard hitting line i like to drop it down a line um meaning like you know it's part of it it could be part of a sentence but the part that is going to really hit you hard is going to a line past the original line does that make sense i hope that makes sense so it's kind of like when mira talks about enjoying next level on the y-axis i like to enjoy my writing on a y-axis i like to see the descent into um what well mira was talking about like more interesting components of song writing and song structure I'm looking at more interesting demons? I don't even know. It kind of depends on what I'm writing, but I just think that lineation is very important and we don't talk about it enough. And I talk about this specifically because I think it does apply to my content a lot. I talk about songs like Wadada and Doomchita and I say that they are talking about these grand things do i actually think that they're talking about that no i don't but i think we we need to analyze literature in order to expand its reach i think that that is very important and um i also my my ap lit professor told me that we're told our class that it doesn't really matter if what you're writing about is true as long as you can prove it and it's interesting big emphasis on the interesting part um i think that the videos i make are very interesting and that's why people have responded to them the way that they have um not to toot my own horn but i do put a lot of effort into these videos and i just wanted to express that i know some of these things are unlikely to have been the case when the writers were, you know, working together, but I don't care, you know? it It's something that I just need to do. I need to do it because it's so much fun for me, and if you don't like that, that's fine, but if you are down to get stupid, it's stupidly smart, smartly stupid i don't know which one i would prefer um if you want to continue to explore these ideas please subscribe i know we we hit 115 subscribers and i don't understand how i don't understand how i deserved any of this but i am so grateful and i hope that you guys continue to watch because i i'm really you know looking forward to a lot of the content I'm currently working on. So thank you. Bye.